In this video, it will be told about several unidentified bodies discovered in 1984, as well as the events related to them. The extremely strange indifference of relatives in one case intertwines with the concern for the deceased in another. It's a story about the confessions of a notorious serial killer, as well as the mysterious murder, the victim of which was identified only after 38 years, on March 29, 2023. Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell to get notifications about new videos. City of Troy, Lincoln County, Missouri. On June 11, 1984, five miles east of Highway 61, at a local farm in a pump house, a farmer discovered a body. The deceased was a middle-aged man, but due to severe decomposition, his age was estimated to be between 40 and 80 years old. He likely stood between 6 feet to 6 feet 2 inches. He was dressed in an expensive pinstripe suit by Bill Blass, a white shirt, shoes, a tie tied with a Windsor knot, and a black Bill Blass peacoat. In his pockets, a black comb, a white handkerchief, and even a gold money clip were found. The cause of death was a gunshot wound to the back of the head. As determined by coroners in 1984, the murder occurred approximately six months before the body was discovered. No documents were found on the deceased, and search efforts yielded no results. Since then, the man has been called Lincoln County John Doe, and this continued for nearly four decades. In 2015, the unidentified person's biological material was sent for DNA analysis, but there were no matches in the databases, and the technology at that time could not yet provide answers to investigators' questions. However, later joint efforts by students from the Southeast Missouri State University, the police, and the Othram Company yielded positive results. Thus, 38 years after the discovery, on March 29, 2023, at a specially convened press conference, it was announced who the unidentified man was. Jack Langeneckert was born into the family of 29-year-old Leonard Langeneckert and 27-year-old Hazel, née Lorenz. He had two sisters, one, Shirley, who was five years older than him, and Jean Olivia, seven years older. They lived in the town of Ferguson and then in the neighboring Florissant. Both are part of the St. Louis metropolitan area and are essentially part of it. By 1982, Langeneckert worked as a real estate agent, and five years prior to that, he was appointed as the manager of Thomas Real Estate Lomely in Paddock Forest. One day, just like any other, he went to work but never made it there. No one saw him again. By that time, Jack was 50 years old and lived in Florissant with his wife and son. After the man's disappearance, the police began a search. A week later, his car was found near St. Louis Airport, but this did not lead to any progress in the case, and over time it was categorized as the cold case. Despite the initial assumptions of experts, now, after the victim's identification, law enforcement officials believe that the murder took place in 1982, not a few months before the discovery in 1984. Captain David Hill of the local police said that detectives are actively working on the case and have already come one step closer to determining who killed Langeneckert. While the cause of death is known, the reason for the homicide is not. Thanks to the cooperation between public and private partners, we are able to pursue justice for Jack and his family, stated in a statement on the website of the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. The Langeneckert family is quite large, with dozens of its members living in St. Louis both past and present, making it all the more surprising that none of them connected the high-profile discovery of an unidentified body in expensive clothing in their county to their missing relative. A fairly well-known artist, Donald Langeneckert, still lives and works in this city. Moreover, in the obituary of Jack's sister Shirley in 2019, her brother is listed as deceased. The identification of Jack Langeneckert was carried out by students from Southeast Missouri State University, led by Professor Jennifer Bankson, immediately after studying the DNA material of another unidentified body from this area. On March 7, 2006, in the Quiver River State Park, near the city of Troy, not far from the highway, a body was discovered. The deceased was a white muscular man, weighing between 220 and 280 pounds, and standing between 5 feet 6 inches and 6 feet tall. His age was estimated to be between 54 and 64 years old. Next to the body, there was a turquoise cylindrical igloo cooler, 
a turquoise thermos with a black lid, and a small red Everetti flashlight. It was impossible to determine the exact time of death, but it was assumed to be no later than six years before the body was found. A facial reconstruction was created, but it did not help identify the deceased. Only after 16 years, thanks to the assistance of the Othram Laboratory, a genealogical tree was built and the family of the unidentified man was found. The deceased's relatives were contacted and the remains were handed over for burial. The family requested man's identity not be disclosed and the details of the case not be revealed. Lincoln County Coroner Dan Heaven stated that due to the condition of the remains at the time of their discovery, the cause of death remains undetermined, but it was most likely non-violent in nature. However, this is not always the case with unidentified bodies. Nevada City, Jane Doe On July 8, 1984, in Nevada City, California, near the South Fork of the Yuba River and not far from State Route 49, the body of an unknown woman was discovered. Coroners estimated that 35 days had passed between the time of death and the discovery of the body. Considering the summer heat, the remains were unrecognizable and the age was determined to be within a broad range of 18 to 30 years old. The height was also established only approximately between 5 feet and 5 feet 8 inches. The cause of the woman's death could not even be determined. The girl was dressed in a burgundy long-sleeved J.C. Penney shirt with a tiger on the front, a red, blue, and tan plaid long-sleeved shirt. She wore Calvin Klein jeans, white high socks with red stripes, a multicolored scarf tied around her right ankle, and blue nylon Nike sneakers with a white emblem. The only jewelry she had was an opal ring. Despite such bright and noticeable clothing, local investigators were unable to identify the deceased woman, and she became known to the public as the Nevada City Jane Doe of 1984. Many years later, efforts were made to establish the girl's identity using DNA analysis, which was compared to the data of at least 11 missing girls. However, 23 years after the discovery of the unidentified body, a well-known criminal unexpectedly made a series of confessions that were investigated by experts from the FBI. Curtis Dean Anderson On August 12, 2000, in Vallejo, California, seven-year-old Mitzi Sanchez was walking home from school while her younger brother lagged behind. At some point, a car approached, and the girl was abducted. The criminal covered her with a blanket and threatened to kill her if she screamed, then chained her leg to the seat. She remained in this position for a day and a half. During this time, the man tormented her, including eating himself but not feeding her, and instead of giving her water, he gave her beer and wine. Despite her young age and fear, Midsey attempted to escape. She seized the moment and tried to unlock her shackle with a nail file, but it didn't work. The tip of the tool broke off. However, the brave girl didn't give up hope of breaking free. When they stopped and the abductor got out of the car, she found the right key in the bunch he left behind, unlocked the shackle, ran out of the car, jumped onto the running board of a truck, and leaped through the window onto the driver's lap. The driver, named Carl Tafua, kept his composure and memorized the license plate number of the car the child had fled from. Soon after this, the car's owner, 39-year-old Curtis Dean Anderson was arrested. Meanwhile, the girl made it to her eighth birthday party, which her family had been preparing before her abduction. She was also awarded a medal for extraordinary courage by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Today, she is involved in public service, helping families of missing children and children facing difficulties. Anderson was charged with kidnapping, sexual assault on a minor under aggravating circumstances, rape, and two counts of indecent acts. However, while in custody, the kidnapper claimed to be involved in another terrible crime. Seven-year-old Ziana Fairchild, just like Midsi Sanchez and Anderson himself, lived in Vallejo. She was abducted on December 9th while walking to school downtown. Anderson confessed to the girl's relatives and others that he had kidnapped and killed her. Just a month before the child's disappearance, he had been released from prison where he had served time for kidnapping a woman in 1991. Once free in Vallejo, he got a job as a taxi driver for City Cab, where Shiana's mother's boyfriend, Robert Turnbow, also worked as a mechanic. Later, the girl's mother recognized Anderson 
as the same man who had been smoking on the corner of a neighboring house on the day her daughter was kidnapped. The next day, he came to their house and offered help in searching for the child. But after 40 days, the family's hopes of finding the girl alive were shattered. Siana's remains, part of the skull and two jaw fragments, were discovered by a builder who was driving along the Soda Springs Road, Santa Clara County. The man noticed something that looked like a rock and got out to remove it from the path. This place was located about 20 miles from Anderson's home in a trailer park. Dr. Gregory Schmunk, a local coroner, stated that the remains belonged to Gianna Fairchild. This was determined both through dental records and DNA analysis. In 2005, he was found guilty of crimes against Midsi Sanchez and the murder of Gianna Fairchild and was sentenced to 301 years in prison. However, the killer did not have to serve his sentence for long. He died on December 9, 2007, on the exact anniversary of Gianna's abduction. But shortly before that, he made shocking confessions to the abduction of 11 people. Also, Anderson confessed that on June 3, 1988, he kidnapped seven-year-old Amber Schwartz Garcia, who was jumping rope in front of her house in Pinole, Contra Costa County, California. The criminal told FBI agents that he was then driving to Arizona to visit his aunt. He killed Amber in a motel room near Tucson, Arizona, and disposed of her body near Benson in the same state. Despite the fact that the investigation had other suspects in this case, including a volunteer who helped search for Amber and a defrocked local priest, the FBI believed that it was indeed Anderson who committed the crime and closed the case in 2009. The girl's mother, Kim Schwartz, believes that one confession is not enough and disagrees with the outcome of the investigation. However, the first murders that the man confessed to were committed in the same area and in the very same year of 1984 when the body of the so-called Nevada City Jane Doe was discovered. The killer stated that his first victim was a girl either in her late teens or early 20s. He believed that she had run away from home, but did not provide any further details about the incident, including her appearance or clothing. After the murder, Anderson disposed of the body in a pool in Marysville, just 35 miles from Nevada City. This victim became known as Yuba County Jane Doe, 1984. The second murder occurred a few days later in the same area. He picked up and killed a young hitchhiker near Clear Lake, which is 75 miles from Marysville and 112 miles from Nevada City. The remains of these victims have never been found, and the criminal himself died a month after his confession. Since then, the FBI has been investigating these cases. On the very same day that Anderson was found guilty of crimes against Ziana Fairchild, his son, 19-year-old Curtis Dean Anderson Jr., was identified as the perpetrator of the murder of 31-year-old Vance Fisher in Richmond. In the end, Anderson Jr. was convicted and sentenced to 16 years in prison. But after 12 years, on January 21, 2019, he was found hanged in his cell. It took the coroner seven months to definitively determine the incident as a suicide. In total, 36 inmates took their own lives in California prisons that year, setting a record for the state. What do you think? Who might have wanted the death of real estate agent Jack Langeneckert? And is Anderson involved in the death of Nevada City Jane Doe?